investigating for our interaction today is the Kimura, the Kimura system. Why is it that I personally feel that it is one of, one of the most prestigious submissions in the game, most dynamic, most perpetual? It's because it doesn't require necessarily a set of athleticism. It can be an individual who is strong that can apply it, but it can also be, as you know, an individual who is not as strong. Why? It's because of the body mechanics and leverage that are involved there. Also, you don't have to be athletic. You don't have to be a particular weight, among other things as well. So the Kimura, when we think of it, we think of a submission, but it is also a tool that is a transitional move as well. So if you can't get the submission, you can utilize it to transition to a more optimal circumstance, if we may say. Anytime you're studying any submission, I argue that it's extremely important that you master the mission-based version of the submission. And the mission-based version of this particular submission, I argue, is the cross-body Kimura lock. Let's take a look at what we're talking about here. So after I've met my son here, he's, he is my trusted Uki for this fine morning. We want to think of a few things. When we're talking about the, the combat base or the mission control Kimura, I am not necessarily talking about the Kimura where, as many of us may study it in our early time as a practitioner where the forearm and knuckles are touching the floor. I'm actually talking about the version where the palm is touching the floor. This one, I argue, is the main mission control Kimura because it's the Kimura you can always go back to almost dynamically throughout the various positions in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So you can apply a mission control Kimura from standing, a mission control Kimura from the bottom, from the side, from the back, from scrambles, among others as well. So this is your mission control Kimura here. Let's talk about some of the basic gripping. You can turn here, sir. We're right here. Okay. Palm, this is all Jiu Jitsu 101. This time, palm out, so all of our fingers are on the outside. And my free arm wants to go through, as you can see, and clasp my own forearm. However, the thing is, we, we can be in optimal and very easily. If my chest is in alignment with my opponent's chest, it becomes very hard for me to be able to reach all the way through and grab my grips. And it can get even harder when their palm is on the floor here. So if their palm is on the floor and I'm trying to get a mission control Kimura and they're heavy or they turn away from me, it becomes very hard for me to place in my second arm. So what we wanna learn is to place our chest at the particular angle that is most suitable. My chest right now is across his body. Okay, it is across his body. I want my chest and my head in alignment with his far side hip. So that would require me to turn to my five o'clock, turning to my five o'clock. We would be placing our chest the entire time on our opponent. And while doing so, we're turning our body. Once that happens, you'll notice that my Kimura second grip becomes much easier to apply. And that's what we want to work with. So over here, I have a partner who's taking it easy. We have, we have chest to chest control, as you can see. I've reached and we've controlled the forearm. At this point, we want to be able to now walk around, walking, 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 walking around where my chest now looks down towards the original five o'clock. Once that happens, my second arm can simply lock through and we get into our figure four grip. We get into our figure four grip. Let's we'll see that one more time. Again, you are in a form of a transition. We're in this position here. We utilize a variety of techniques to get our palm grip on the forearm. When my other arm comes underneath here, it gets harder and harder for me to get my grips. So as a result, in this position, as my fingers come underneath the shoulder, 
Now I start to walk my body, extending my leg across. I'm looking at the five o'clock. Now my arm can climb up and get my grips. If the grips are locked in, we can now work for the submission. But the interesting thing is once the grips are locked in, my elbow is on his abdomen side. We actually want in an optimal kimura for my elbow to be outside on the floor. Now, what does that mean? Notice here, I have a kimura grip. If we do what we were just talking about, I'm looking at his five o'clock and we lock in our kimura grip. My control arm, which is my right arm closest to my body, is still on the inside of my opponent's hips. We want to be able to place that elbow on the floor. Once that happens, we'll have access to finishing the submission. We're in this position here. My partner, whatever they're doing, we get our grips. We start walking around. But remember, we want to start to walk our fingers beneath the shoulder so we have leverage. Now here we are. We walk around. We're chest to chest. We're climbing our arm. We get our grips. Now that we get our grips, my back arm, which is the controlling arm, is still on the inside of my partner's chest. So we want to be able to take that arm out where it touches the floor. So if it touches the floor, my elbows, both of them, are now across my partner, and we can finish the submission. Let's see that again. Inside arm, it's, it's key, guys. So if I'm here, we're locked in. When we fall back, because we want to come back to our original position, my elbows touch the floor. So I have two elbows on the floor here. That would mean that we start out. Here we go, three o'clock grips. We walk around, we get everything tightened up. Then we walk back to pull our elbow to the floor. Now that both of my elbows on the floor, we can utilize key characteristics to finishing the Kimura. We start chest to chest. We get our initial grip. We place an arm underneath the shoulder. We walk up, five o'clock. We lock in our figure four grip and we walk back. As we do so, we lever our arm so that both of our elbows are now touching the floor, okay? With that, let's go ahead and work on just that slight transition to work ourselves up, work our body out and get a sweat going, and then we'll move on from there, guys. Are there any questions? That sounded great. I, thought I need to practice it before I forget. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good. Let's work on that. Let's spend a few minutes just working on those particular details, and we'll move on from there, guys. Let's give it a go. Very good, guys. Let's keep going. One more minute. Just remember your initial grip, your movement of your chest, and returning back to mission control. As you do so, make sure both elbows are on the floor.
Okay, guys, excellent job. Let's bring it back in. All right. So, so far we're talking about initial gripping, okay? As I proceed, if you don't mind, I'd like to survey what belt colors do we have with us this evening? What is the highest belt that's attending so far? Uh, blue belt. We've got a black belt, a blue belt. We've got a, two purple belts. A brown belt. Excuse me, two, uh, did I say two purple? I think three purple. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Uh, a blue and a white. Two whites. Excuse me. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate that. It'll help with uh, help the instructor communicate and know what level we're at. Okay. So we're here and we're talking about our angles. We have our initial gripping, okay? Here we are, 12 o'clock. We want to be able to move our chest. So we win the initial grip, a traditional C grip. You can keep your thumbs on the outside or you can keep it on the inside, it's your choice. Now that you're in, each one is unique in its own way. We have our initial grip. We start to create the boundary with our free arm coming underneath the collarbone. Once that happens, we're pinning the arm in for a split moment as we north. our grips, okay? My right arm is still on the inside of my opponent's chest. As a result, we want to figure out a way where we can place that ignition arm onto the floor. Once we can connect it to the floor, we've created the separation of their defense from the chest to the floor. And then from there, it becomes very hard for anyone to defend. And the most, the strongest dilemma you probably face is freeing that arm once it's there. Okay, so with that in mind, we're here. We've got our grips, and we have our elbow on the inside. We talked about winning our elbow to the floor. As you do so, we want to be able to cut corners for a split moment. Okay, and that cutting of the corner will be your simple hip transition. As I walk back, we actually switch our legs, and we try to win our leg over the shoulder. Notice what happened here. Not only did my leg come over, but my right arm and my left arm are now all on the outside of my opponent's hips, placing it onto the floor. This is a key characteristic because what happens is if we ever come back and we end up here and we try to pull the arm back onto the floor, it's going to be quite difficult. But if we do do so, now that we're in this position, we can't really finish with a traditional Kimura until we can create leverage. That's where the leg comes. So we would switch our hips, we'd walk, walk, finding that angle. Now we can create the leverage to simply turn our partner and not lift our partner. If you want to figure out the breaking mechanics of a Kimura, Let's have my son here. The elbow, the knuckle line, if we're right here, this knuckle line, regardless of the strength of any human being, if you can get it behind their chest line for a split moment, you're going to win the Kimura 95% of the time. We're trying to figure out ways to just get the knuckles behind the body line. Once that happens, we want to connect the knuckles to the back of the ribs. Regardless of the size and strength of the individual, you should be able to finish, hopefully, your opponent if you can figure out ways to do so. And that's what we're going through in this particular stage. So we're in this position here, okay? In this position, your partner will start to, at times, extend their arms, okay? We want to be able to bring it back and try to get, again, those knuckles behind his ribs here. As a result, we want to talk about a few things. Number one is something known as the motorcycle. What is the motorcycle? When you have your Kimura grip, if you want to be able to bend the arm in, you yourself would require to bend your own elbow and wrist down. 
As a result here, bending the elbow and wrist down will pull in the elbow and your opponent's arm to an optimal position. Remember, this is a very key characteristic, doing your own form of rubbing of the rim. My partner's arms are extended. We're on the floor. We now want to turn on our ignition and rub the engine. Once we do so, we're able to twist and turn the arm in. Again, pulling through, driving the knuckles in. Let's see where we are so far. Okay, we're here, we have an initial grip, okay? We've created an angle, now we walk, keeping chest to chest, sliding our arm up. We've gone our figure four. Now that we have our figure four, we start to shoot our hips forward and turning. So we drop our hip and my elbow, but I also walk my leg up. I was able to successfully place and plant my leg right around the circular region of my partner's head, and my elbow is on the floor. We have our grips, but I haven't yet rung the edges. Once that happens, notice what happens. I start, relax, relax, relax. I start to turn in the elbow, and my partner's knuckles are now connected to the back of my, of his back. Experience to know how to finish it. What in detail people make, which is I believe a mistake, is they try to finish the kimura in this position by extension. They do a bench press. You don't want a bench press. You're actually gonna be pulling. You're gonna be retracted. What does that mean? So we're here, we're in this position, we have our grips. I'm not extending, I'm being retractive. Retraction means that your leverage arm is pulling back and your control arm is just maintaining its initial position. So you're not doing a bench press. If you try to bench press, it's very hard to finish. But if you retract this elbow here, if I retract and lock, that's all you need. That's where the breaking mechanics happen. I'm not very strong. You will face people that are much stronger than you. As a result, we want to try to figure out a way where our intellect would allow us to successfully defeat our opponent. If I try to fight fire with fire, you know that sometimes that doesn't really work. But if you retract, you're essentially fighting fire with water, you're retracting, and you get the finish from here. I hope that's a clear um, description and illustration. Again, we are not pushing, but we're retracting. We're retracting the elbow. That sounds great. Can we practice that? Details, and we'll, we'll break, and we'll get in some, some drilling. Awesome. Awesome. So we're here. C grip at the wrist, palm to, to abdomen. We've created our angle, switched our hips. But remember, we're walking as tight as possible. Now that we've reached the optimal angle, we switch our elbow, and as we're doing so, we're switching our legs. So we can create that leverage, not locked in. Again, we are not pushing. All we do is we run the engine, the knuckles are being turned in. Once they're in, all you need to do is just retract and you finish. Retracting the elbow, shoulder, and you get the submission. Let's try it out, guys. Let's just go ahead and work on it for three minutes here. Try both sides. Think of the details. Let's, let's give it a try.
Remember to retract the elbow, guys, yeah? Great job, Rose. Great job, Mr. Tyler. Yes, Jenna, excellent job, Jenna. Let's go one more minute, guys. If you feel comfortable with one side, try the other side. All right, 30 seconds, guys. Let's get in one more rep if you can. Remember to rub the engine, right? You want to twist your wrists in. Winning the knuckle battle line. Excellent job, team. Let's bring it in. Let's move on then. So uh, the next technique is, is vital for the transition of where we are because it's a scenario where maybe some of our details weren't applied at the right time, OK? So we might end up with something known as a scramble. As I look to the screen, it looks like most of us have ukis. And these ukis aren't necessarily live ukis, but that's OK. With a little bit of creativity, you should be able to apply this particular scenario. So I'm here, and we're setting up the kimura. And what happens is we get our grips, we get our angles, but we're too late with one detail. That's the leg placement. That leg that comes over the head is key to pin your opponent or your partner to the floor while also creating leverage. So you can get that knuckle and rub the engine behind the hip line. What happens is if you're facing someone that's a little bit more dynamic, athletic, strong, they have a sit-up reaction. And when they sit up, they can simply throw you over because of our hip placement. Let's see what we're talking about. So we're here, okay, we get our grips, we walked, We've tied everything. Now, as I come around to place my elbow to the floor, I switch my legs. Maybe I was too late, so I place my hip first, and then I try to step my leg over. As I place my hip first, my partner, because my chest is now aloft, it is not connected to his chest, they sit up and push me, so he sits up. Yeah, there you go, just like this. I didn't get my leg up, so now we're in this position. In this position, 
you'll see lots of people just try to extend their arm now. Instead of retract the elbows, retracting would be pulling your shoulders back. So they extend the arm, they push it out. And what happens as you're pushing, that really doesn't create anything. Your partner comes up, and then you're here, and now the arm is placed. And sometimes, again, with some strength and mobility, if he turns his left hip to the floor, he can create the space to place his palm back in and step over, and now you're going to be required to utilize quite a bit of strength if you have it, or retract everything and just start to defend. So let's talk about a few things we can do from here. If I'm in this position, remember retracting, which is turning your shoulder back, is key. If you retract, you can continuously pull his knuckle line up behind his back. If you push, you see I've created the space he needs to create to place back inside to defend. But if I'm retracting, that knuckle line is constantly connected to the back, minimizing the space and what is required for us to finish the submission. So if we're in this position and I retract, the knuckle line is still behind my opponent's back. As they come up, all you need to do very slowly would be the rollover, okay? So you have everything connected, then you can roll over, but I'm not rolling over towards my three o'clock, I'm going behind me like a bridge. My partner has a free right arm. If they place it out, but place it in front of you, well, place it in front, in front of your head, in front of your head, on the floor. If I go and just try to roll over my shoulder, I can't do it because he has a base. But what I can do is go over my left shoulder. So you simply just bridge. You come up, elbow is back in place, and you walk up and get that leg over. And now you can finish. Let's see it again, guys. Come back way. Okay. Lay down. Okay, so we're in this position to get our grips. Everything is there. Okay, we went through the details. We're winning. We finally got the leverage. We switched. We're trying to get the elbow down, but my leg doesn't come over the head. My partner, my chest is away from his chest. He sits up. Sit above. So we're in this position. Remember, we're not pushing forward. We're retracting our shoulder. Retraction is that you're rotating your hips. And now this knuckles, these knuckles can come up to the optimal position. So we pull it up, and there it is. Now, maybe strength, leverage, whatever it is, they push us forward and we end up on our back, but we're gonna utilize that momentum. We bridge out behind my left shoulder and we don't bridge to the side. Bridge and with my legs, we kick. We come up, we're back, we have hip to hip, we walk our leg over, and now we can retract and finish. Let's talk about one detail, guys. When you're bridging, look at my head, guys. Sometimes when we bridge, we tend to bridge with, with lots of strength. Okay, we bridge like this. I'm gonna show you a trick here. Where my head is, if I can turn my head, if I'm trying to bridge to my left, and I turn my head to my right to create space, now I just try to look behind me, who's behind me, your body, your body naturally starts to twist. And all you need to do here is just come up. You don't need to be dynamic to perform this type of bridge. Let's see that again. So we're not just bridging like this. My head, if I'm bridging to my left, I turn it to the side, now I start trying to look behind me, as far back behind me. Naturally, my body twists in a way that I can simply just churn because my body will follow the angle of my head. All right? Try to remember that detail. Let's try out this transition. Remember, retraction. Retraction, not protraction. We are retracting. Bridging over our left shoulder. Turn your head and look. Roll over. Back to Mission Control Kimura leg over the head and try to finish, guys. Let's try it out. Let's spend a few minutes trying that out, guys. Come on, your shoulder's okay? Uh, yeah, it's just that pain. It's so painful. That's okay, come on. It happens to me too sometimes. It's, uh, what? Bob, do you know what this bump is? 
Yeah. Well, we'll talk about it. Let's see how the team is doing. Remember to try to keep retracting and the, L, the knuckles constantly on your opponent's back, behind the hip line. Very good, Pender. Very good, brother. Excellent. Let's go 30 more seconds, guys. Let's get in one more rep if you can. Remember the detail of how to bridge, look behind you, turning your head away. Very good, Miss Natalie, great job. That was a good roll. Okay, guys, let's bring it in. Are there any questions thus far, any thoughts or feelings as we now progress to a little bit more dynamic movements, maybe unorthodox movements? Please feel free to ask away, guys. If you don't, let's I, move on. Professor, yes, I think that, that motorcycle grip, I some, we try to use that when we're also doing the Americana too, right? Yes, uh, ma'am. That rolling that wrist out? Yeah, definitely. If you're trying to do the, the Americana while you do so, just like you said, that motorcycle grip and rotation. You really want to win that the knuckle line. It's a small detail, but it'll, it'll change your Kimura attacks tremendously. Oh, guys, let's continue then. Let's try out something a little bit more dynamic, okay? So we're in the same position. The only difference we're, we're going to do instead of falling back in case our partner is heavier or larger, stronger, we're actually going to preemptively roll and create the angle that we need. Let's try it out. So we're here. Okay. So we're in this position. We went through everything like we talked about angles, the shifts, we created the line, but we were too late. We couldn't get the leg over. So they sit up. We talked about one particular movement, which is the retraction bubble sit up. Yes, and we're retracting our shoulders and we're trying to create the opportunity by falling back to our back, using the angle to bridge and pulling him over. But this time we're gonna preemptively prevent that. So if I'm in this position, we set up our grips, my partner comes up, as he comes up, I then with my right shoulder and my right hip, since I'm looking at him, I'm gonna shoot my hips forward, forward. Now what we do is we roll. And the knuckles, while we retract, are constantly being driven behind the back. So he comes up, I shoot my hips forward, hip to hip, now I roll. Bubba roll with me, so I don't hurt you. We're constantly rotating, 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 rotating. We're back in the same position. We get our shoulders, and we set up the Kimura finish from mission control. I'm just going to make sure the camera is a little bit larger so I can see if I lost 
the space for you to see that. Let's do it again, guys. Come on, come on. Slow down. Okay, so we're in this position. We've done everything. We, we got our grips. We, we, we're not forward. We switched. We got the elbow to the floor. We were too late. My partner's coming up. I can't get my leg over. So we take our shoulder and our hips. Here, we tuck in our shoulders. We're up. Now we're forcing our partner. If he doesn't come up, you have the submission. But if he comes up, we continuously roll. Now we're just rolling. And you finish. Nice. A slightly different angle, but this time, what this one, what this one does versus the other one, it creates a, a greater gap between you and your partner in fear that they might be able to pin you. When you shoot your hips forward, you've created at least an additional foot between you and your partner, so you can rotate the knuckles up high. Let's see it again, come on up. Let's see it again. Okay, so we went through the motions, we've done everything, okay? We switched, we're too late, okay? Instead of falling back and retracting my shoulders, we're going to shoot our hips forward into the barrel roll. So my hip to hip, up. Now what we need to do is just roll. As we roll, everything else is the same. And you finish, guys. Just remember that key detail when you bridge. If I'm trying to bridge to my left, I'm trying to bridge to my left. I don't just go like this, turn my head, and then look. It'll be very helpful, guys. Let's try it out. Let's see how it works for us. Let's work on this for a few minutes, guys. Let's feel it out. Good job, Jenna. I saw that. That was good. Great job, Miss Natalie. Great job, man. Great job, Mr. Tyler. Very good, Max and Rose. Everyone is doing excellent. Bonnie, great job. Let's do 30 more seconds, guys. Let's do one more rep. Okay, guys, let's bring it in. Very good. Everyone did an excellent job. It's 11.43 now, okay? The Kimura system is a very dynamic, very deep system. There are so many things you can do. 
Right now, we've just scratched the surface, but the interesting thing is it's the most important aspect of the Kimura system. So not only did you scratch, but you were able to dig in deep and place the roots in. So this is your mission control Kimura. Anytime you have a Kimura grip and your, your mind is overwhelmed with stress or sweat or fatigue, whatever it is, just think of coming back home to this mission control Kimura to the best of your ability. Just think of rotating your shoulders, the knuckle line, all of those things, okay? Um, the Kimura system is very dynamic, as I have said. I'm just going to demonstrate one thing here, just so we have a visualization. If I'm facing an opponent and they're on their, their glutes, okay, so they're in a sit-up guard position, anytime I do a knee cut pass, my professor is arguably one of the best in the world at doing the knee cut, Lucas Lepre. Anyways, if you see all of his fights, he always uses the knee cut. It's nothing dynamic, just a knee cut pass. But what happens anytime you do it, is okay, I'm in this position, my partner is in a sit-up guard position. I have to I create an angle so I can penetrate with one leg. Now that I'm in, we can turn our partner to the side and we start to utilize the knee cut. But what happens is anytime you place your leg in and your partner remains seated, they're either gonna wrap your leg, okay, and place an arm on the floor, for example, or they'll reach up to get the belt or the pants, put it in between, it gets very dynamic in sport jiu-jitsu. But one thing we're gonna be looking for at all times is anytime my partner places an arm on the floor, what we can do to produce that is a mere gesture by placing and pushing his head over. So if I step in and I push his head to the side and he doesn't wanna to go to the floor and the arm touches the floor, that's a perfect time to do something known as the rolling kimura into the T kimura, which we can utilize into our system of a command form of Kimura. So we're in this position. We want to create an angle, so we push the knee to the angle. Now we step in. As we step in, we push the head. The arm touches the floor. Now we want elbow to elbow control, okay? What does elbow to elbow control mean? Is we lean forward, and my elbow reaches his elbow. And all we need to do, since I've reached his elbow, I already have my grips to set up the Kimura. So we get our grips, now I roll over my shoulder, and now we're in something known as the T Kimura position. In this T Kimura position, depending on his reaction, you have lots of things you can do. If he rolls up to his right shoulder, roll up, then there are several entries to go into back control, there are attacks, etc. But due to our theme in this position, all you really need to do is create space with your hip, placing his shoulders to the floor, pendulum sit up, switch, and you're back into mission control Kimura. Let's see it one more time, guys. So I'm back here. My partner is in a seated guard position. You're battling with someone. You place in an angle first. So we're here, you wanna push, 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 step out of the angle, step in, penetrate. Anytime they sit up, they have an arm on the floor, elbow to elbow. Roll over my shoulder. I'm going to go slow here. And we locked. Switch, switch. And you finish, guys. Okay? That is just one example. It is one example of the many maneuvers you can do in a system that is just orchestrated within the Kimura. Since we're running out of time, we're going to talk about one detail. And that is if you're ever trying to finish a Kimura, okay, and your partner, you're trying to create the frame for their elbow to be free, among other things, you can switch your traditional Kimura lock into a bicep cutting form and do everything else the same. Let's take a look. So if I'm here with my partner, and we went through the system, we're trying to get our grips, we're switching our hips, Nothing's working, we're trying to walk around, it's not working for us. So we get our grips, I start trying to get my leg over. We take our free arm, and we're gonna go underneath his elbow, grabbing my own tricep, and my inside arm, inside arm, grabs my other bicep and tricep, one and two. Even if they're holding on, it doesn't matter. Now all you need to do is rotate your shoulders and you have a bicep cutter. You can go through the stages to enhance the submission 
You can even crawl out of the angle and finish from there. I'm just going to make sure that we have a good angle here so we can see one another. Okay. Let's see it one more time, guys. So we'll finish tonight's lesson with the scenario where our partner, or this morning's lesson, we can't free it. We're trying to rub the engine, we're churning, we're trying to push it, it's just not working for us. So we opt to a secondary attack from here versus a primary attack. And that's the Kimura bicep cutter. Everything is the same. All of our grips are the same, the angles, etc. But once we're in and we're trying to free it, we're, we're turning our hips, we get our elbow to the floor, it's not working. So we come back, we have our grips. Notice what we're going to do now. My inside arm will latch on to his own wrist, pulling his arm to his chest, keeping it as tight as possible. My free arm then crawls underneath the elbow, grabbing my tricep. My inside arm that was originally controlling the wrist frees itself, and you grab your own bicep. So tricep, bicep, tricep, tricep. You're locked in. Bring in your elbows, keeping it as tight as possible. Now all you need to do is just rotate a little and you finish. You squeeze and you finish. If your partner is not tapping, you can go through the steps we just talked about. Start turning your hips, get your leg over, and do the same thing, finish. If it so happens that uh, nothing is working for you, you can't get your leg over, you can even opt to walk all the way around and just pick up his body and finish. Okay? The good thing about the bicep kimura is that it will force you to be retractive. So you're retracting your arms. Everything we were talking about versus proactivity, you're retracting. The bicep kimura. You can't be proactive. It's very hard. If you start to push, there's no submission. You need to retract, and you finish. Retract, and you finish. Retracting, and you finish. And if you really want to increase the strength to the submission, my inside arm or the underarm, the bottom arm, instead of grabbing my own tricep, we actually grab behind his shoulder. Now you grab, and now it's even worse, guys. So original position, basic kimura grips, grab the wrist, pull it to his chest, keep it as tight as possible. Arm comes around grabbing your tricep. My inside arm then releases the wrist and you grab your bicep. You're squeezing as tight as, as, tight as possible. You don't want him to pull his arm out. To increase the veracity of the submission, pick up your arm and his shoulder, take your arm, grab behind his own shoulder and come back and lock it in. Then retraction, 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 and submission. My son was tapping underneath, so we don't want to push too much to hurt him here. Okay, guys? So let's finish this morning's lesson and our visitation with the Kimura bicep cutter system from our mission control. Let's try it out, guys. We'll spend about three, four minutes trying it out, both sides, feeling it out. Bicycle Kimura, guys. <clears throat> Very good, Pender. Very good, brother.
I'll go look at that freeze. Yeah, it looks like maybe something froze. I can't see it, but it's okay. Very good, guys. Let's go one more minute, just working on our bicep cutter kimura here. It's a little bit more dynamic, as you can recall. But it's very effective when someone is not freeing their arm. Very good, Rose. Way to transition there. Excellent. The beneficial thing about the bicep kimura is that you can, with those grips, do the bicep cutter and the kimura. So it's double the pain, unfortunately. Very good. Excellent job, guys. 30 seconds. Let's do one more rep. And then we'll open the floor and see if there are any questions, observations, or feelings. Oh, guys, great job, everybody. Let's bring it in. Great job. So today we worked on the Kimura, right? An introduction into a very unique, diverse system. We talked about a lot of things. The vision control Kimura, always come back to it if you need to. If something happens, preemptively rolling through. But what's very important is to always retract your shoulders, winning the knuckle line, getting it behind your partner, and retracting your shoulders from there. Once you've mastered that, that foundation, you'll be able to build off into a a variety of very unique, diverse, versatile movements for which are equally effective with the proper angles, precision, and just dedication, dedication to the system itself. Try the Kimura lock, particularly the Kimura bicep cutter. I know you're working on it on your ukis. If you have someone that loves you enough that you can try the submission on and they won't get upset, Take it light, but just try it out, all right? Try it out. Don't make them scream or anything like that, but you'll see how uncomfortable A few more minutes, guys. Just remember, I think Natalie, she recorded it, if I'm, if I'm not incorrect, and you can always go back to the details we talked about, and hopefully it'll be helpful for your progression, guys. Thank you so much, Professor. Really appreciate it. The, definitely, I can already tell that some of those pieces were missing from my foundation and practicing them and plugging them is gonna be really great for my game. Thank you, sir. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you for that feedback. Thank you, Professor, that was so cool. I, I did that bicep cutter Kimura variation where you hold the shoulder and that's the first arm lock I've done this entire quarantine on my training dummy where I actually felt like I could rip my teddy bear's arm off if I wanted to. <laughs> So much leverage. Thank you so much. Thank you. Try not to rip your teddy bear's arm off, though, but that's great. 
I can't wait to come visit you guys. Soon as like we got a gym exchange, this one. You guys are too close to miss out on. Definitely, you guys are always welcome. Please come what's, and join. What's, we'll the name, what's the name of your wonderful training assistant? Oh, my wonderful training assistant. This is Rahman. It means Thank merciful. You. Well, Rahman. Rahman, thank you so yeah. much for helping us out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Your team's going to be quite ironic, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys. Thank you so much. We'll we will post this uh, the recording.